ニナ二人の時はそう呼ぼう願いを一つだけ祈るなら星の神様たった一人でいいから。Nina the Starry Bride Episode 2. If I had to sit down and really think about how would I describe Episode 2, it would be emotional. And I really, really love it for that. I think that, depending on what kind of viewer you are, I think that this could be seen as like a tearjerker.、Uh, but I really think it just really encapsulated the emotion of, of Nina. And, you know, she had a moment where she was breaking away from, you know, not from captivity, but she was breaking away from the palace. And, you know, if she were to put her thinking cap on for a second, she would think, like, maybe why is this specific dude telling me this? You know, why? Like, if she just thought about it, she could be like, okay, maybe this is like a trap. You know, maybe I should tell somebody, you know, like just anything. But she was just so fixated on the fact, like, I can leave here. And once she did, She began to really think to herself, like, you know, but who do, where, where would I go? Who would I have to see? And, you know, who would remember me? And she ends up fleeing back to her, o- her old, you know, shack house place. And she looks for her old friend, who obviously he dipped out. He's not there anymore. And she has a really emo- emotional moment with Azure. And. She's talking about dying in the, in the sense of like her former self dying and like who would remember my name? You know, who would remember who I was? You know, who would, who would remember me as Nina?、Uh, I'm alive, but I'm, I'm also dead at the same time. And I was like, wow, it's just so emotional. And it got me a little bit. It, 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 you know, I didn't cry or anything, but it, it choked me up a little bit. I was like, man, that's, that's a weird thing, right? It's like, It's one part of like, yeah, she was living in the slums. You know, tragedy bef- befell her family. She ended up on the streets. She ended up in the slums. But she was still very much her. She's, she's in a better situation now, even though she's promised, you know, to some other nation or whatever. She's the, the level of life that she'll live, regardless, even if she does end up needing to go and marry some random prince in another country, it's still beyond. In reach of a normal person、uh, in her time and stuff like that. But the trade off is killing off who she is or who she was to now adopt this new persona and this new version of herself. And that's emotional. And then for Azure's side, you know, I guess the same kind of thing happened to him.、Um, he, this spurred, you know, her tragedy, her trauma spurred memories in him. And his memories were very much like he wasn't from this family. Like he was like, it looks like he was like adopted into this family.、Uh, and that's a very noble, you know, nobles do that. You know,、um, kings, queens, they do that, you know, maybe when they don't have a lineage or for whatever reason, it does end up happening, at least, you know, in the fantasy story settings and maybe even in real life in like, you know, old times, like, you know,、uh, when the kings and queens were relevant. In those kinds of settings, you know, it, it makes sense that nobles and stuff would adopt children,、uh, either ones that they see potential in or、uh, for a variety of the reasons. So it makes sense. So he's not even originally, so even though he was watching his sister before, they still weren't technically related at all. And I think that's just so cool. Well, cool, but then also tragic for him. So it spurred a bunch of memories within him. And, you know, he offers, like, hey, I really like the moment where he was like, hey, you know, leave. And, you know, she's going to decide to stick by him and they have a sweet emotional moment.、Uh, the romance stuff, I still feel a little icky about, you know, like, I think she's too young still and some other things. But hey, it's fiction. So the romance stuff, I'm still, you know, a little icky about, but I'm less icky about it now because originally my thought process was like, oh, If it wasn't for who you're replacing, the person you're replacing, this is her brother. Now, that's still very much the case, but the difference is, is it's not your blood relative. So, I mean, you know, anime do what anime do. And they like to interject, like, oh, yeah, you grew up their whole life, but, you know, not by blood. Hey, hey. You know what I mean? The anime likes to do that a lot.、Uh, J- Japan and their creators like to do that a lot. So, you know, it makes it feel a little bit better knowing that, hey, you have these two. 
general strangers, you know, falling in love. And the reality is even the reality of the reality was that they weren't really related. Then the other part of the episode was all focused on uh, Ma- Masuma, Mashuma, and he, he, he calls himself Plumpy. He said he's a little bit plump. I love the little prince. The little prince was adorable and cute, and I love his interactions with Nina, and I love that he was just trying to get his brother's attention. The The little prince was just such a highlight for this episode, and the fact that he calls himself plump, just a little plump, was just like the cutest thing ever. I just love it, and that was just so, so adorable, and I genuinely love his relationship with Nina, and like an instantaneous relationship. And even when he was thinking about or telling her about how often they can't visit and how far away the kingdom she's going to be a part of is and stuff like that. He was really emotional about it. He's like, yo, my sister is leaving. So it's just so cute. Uh, and I hope that that relationship gets fostered between her and her little brother because uh, she's never really had a family. So this is her first legitimate, you know, even though she's on like a 45 day timeline, this is her first legitimate shot at like having a family. Uh, and even the king himself uh, could, you know, could be like a, a fatherly figure to her. Now, the one thing that I don't quite know uh, is the current queen. It very much seems that Plumpy Boy is very much her son. That's why she's so f- fervent at him being the next king. And we can surmise that the king and the current queen, king and current queen, this is very much their kid. And we can surmise that because of the adoption, the, 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 the prince, Azure, the reason he's not in line for the throne is because he's not of direct descent. That leaves Nina, or what she would have been, you know, her, her, who she took over, you know, who she, was she also adopted or was she also legitimately the king's daughter? And then they, Mashima, you know, the little boy, also mentioned that, oh, if grandfather were not ill, he would be doing something about her marriage. So is it like, oh, is she actually the grandfather's kid? You know, there's so many questions I have here, but obviously the grandfather has some kind of love for the daughter, which she's representing. So anyway, let me just say this. Nina, the story bright second episode, really, really good stuff. I think this is the gem of the season. I love it. It's just, it was so good to watch and such a fun time. Uh, emotions run high, everything. It was just such a good show, such a good episode. So, yeah, 9 out of 10, that was great. Uh, put my reviewer cap on. Let's call it 8 out of 10. Let's beat in the middle. All right, my friends, I'll see you guys next week for episode 3.